In this video, we'll learn about current flow and semiconductors. Current flows in semiconductors when there's a net movement of charge carriers. There's two types of charge carriers. Electrons carry negative charge. Poles carry positive charge. So for example, if electrons move from right to left through the semiconductor lattice, that represents a net movement of negative charge from right to left, or equivalently, a net flow of positive charge from left to right. Similarly, if holes are traveling from left to right, that would be an additional source of positive current flowing from left to right. If we consider a block of semiconductor material and take a cross section across it with area A, we can quantify the current flow across that cross section as follows. Let's imagine that a certain number of electrons are flowing from right to left across that surface. Let's say the number of electrons flowing is known to us per second crossing that cross-sectional area A. Now each electron carries a charge Q equal to the fundamental electronic charge and it flows across that cross-sectional area A. This then is a measure of the current density flowing due to the movement of electrons in the semiconductor. Current density is indicated using the symbol J and we use a subscript N to denote that this is the current density arising from negative charge carriers or free electrons. You'll notice that this has units of charge or coulombs given by the symbol Q per second per cross-sectional area, so per meter squared. So you end up with coulombs per second per meter squared and coulombs per second is of course amps. If at the same time we've got a mo net movement of holes across that same surface from left to right, that would give rise to a additional current density, Jp, equal to Q times the number of holes flowing across that area per second divided by the cross-sectional area A. And if the movement of the charge carriers is as indicated in the figure, both of those would add together to give a total current density J, representing the total current density flowing from left to right. There are two main mechanisms that give rise to the movement of carriers in semiconductor, and both are important in understanding the flow of current in semiconductor materials. They are drift current and diffusion current. So let's look at each in turn. Drift current flows in semiconductors in response to an applied electric field. For example, in this picture, a voltage V is applied across a semiconductor brick of length L, resulting in the electric field E. In this case, E would be equal to V over L. The drift current density that arises in response to this electric field has two compo components, that due to holes and that due to electrons. The component due to holes is proportional to the electronic charge Q times the concentration of holes in the semiconductor and is proportional to the electric field E that's applied. And there's a final constant of proportionality for which we use the symbol mu P that represents the mobility of holes in the semiconductor. And it's a measure of the ease with which holes move through this particular semiconductor material. Similarly, we can write an expression for the drift current that arises, the uh, drift current density that arises due to electrons. Again, we've got the charge density due to electrons, Q times N, times the applied electric field E, times the carrier mobility for electrons, mu N. 
Now, the carrier mobility for electron and holes are not the same. For example, an intrinsic silicon Carrier mobility for electrons is significantly higher than that of holes, about two and a half times higher. Now, the total current flowing across this cross section A is the current density J times that cross sectional area A. Now, if we substitute in this expression for J, we arrive at Q P mu P plus N mu N times E. And if we substitute in V, the voltage applied V over the length of the semiconductor bar L here for the electric field, then we've got this expression shown here. Now this is starting to resemble Ohm's law, where we've got V equals I times R, or I equals V over R, where R is proportional to the length of the semiconductor bar, L. That makes sense, because if we've got a longer conductor, we would expect it to be more resistive. It's inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area A. That also makes sense because if we double the cross-sectional area A, it's kind of like having two pieces of semiconductor connected in parallel. So we would expect the resistance to be cut in half. And then the final constant here is the resistivity, rho. of the semiconductor material. Its inverse, sigma, is the conductivity of the semiconductor. And it depends on the carrier mobilities and the carrier concentrations, as shown here. Note that resistivity has units of ohms times length or ohm meters. You'll see then that when substitute into this expression here, a units of ohm meters results in the expected units of ohms for the resistance of the semiconductor bar R. Now a key intuition here is you'll notice that resistivity is inversely proportional to the carrier concentrations of both holes and electrons. So when the carrier concentrations become high, the resistivity becomes low and the material behaves like a conductor. When the carrier concentrations are low, the resistivity becomes high and the material behaves like an insulator. Hence, it's a semiconductor. Finally, it should be noted that the carrier mobilities mu p and mu n have a strong temperature dependence. Therefore, the resistivity of the semiconductor material also has a strong temperature dependence. A totally separate mechanism for carrier transport in semiconductors arises due to diffusion. Diffusion is just the natural tendency of particles to move from areas of high concentration to low concentration. In the case of charge carriers, that can result in the net flow of charge or current. For example, imagine that we're constantly injecting an excess of holes into the left side of the semiconductor brick. That's going to result in a relatively high concentration of holes at position x equals zero here on the left side of the brick. As a result, there'll be a natural diffusion of holes from areas of high concentration towards areas of lower concentration deeper in the brick. As the holes diffuse from left to right through the brick, some will recombine, and as a result, their concentration will decrease. This creates a gradient in the hole concentration. And the rate at which holes diffuse, measured at any point along the semiconductor brick, will be proportional to the gradient of the hole concentration at that point in the brick. So the diffusion current density, JP, 
will arise that's proportional to that gradient and proportional to the fundamental electronic charge Q. And then there's a final constant of proportionality called the diffusion constant. This is another measure of the ease with which holes move through the semiconductor. So not surprisingly, it's related to the mobility of holes in the semiconductor material by this simple expression here. They're related by a voltage VT called the thermal voltage. Because it's proportional to absolute temperature T and some fundamental constants, K, Boltzmann constant, and Q, the fundamental electronic charge. It's worthwhile remembering that the thermal voltage is about 25 millivolts at room temperature. Now you'll note here that the gradient at this point or the slope of the whole concentration is negative because the concentration is declining. And this gives rise to a net movement of positive charge from left to right through the semiconductor. And that's a positive current on this x-axis. Therefore, we've got this negative sign in the expression here. A negative gradient gives rise to a positive current density and vice versa. Diffusion current can also arise due to diffusion, diffusion of electrons. So for example, let's say an excess of electrons is being injected into the left side of this semiconductor brick so that there's very high electron concentration at position x equals zero. Again, the electrons will naturally diffuse from areas of high concentration to low concentration. So we expect the electrons to move from left to right. Now, as they travel, we're going to have to continuously inject more electrons. Some will recombine as they go. So we might expect their concentration to naturally decline as we move from left to right through the semiconductor bar. This creates a gradient in the electron concentration and a resulting diffusion current that is proportional to that gradient. It's also proportional to the diffusion constant for holes. Oh, sorry, for electrons. which differs from that of holes as indicated by the subscripts NP. Again, remember that diffusion constants are related to the corresponding carrier mobilities by the thermal voltage VT. Now, electrons diffusing from left to right means the net flow of negative charge from left to right through the semiconductor, which corresponds to positive current flow from right to left. Now, as was the case with drift current, diffusion currents can arise both due to electrons and holes simultaneously. So the total diffusion current is the sum of the diffusion current due to both holes and electrons.